Oh, that's it. I've had it with this dump. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off. Okay, just calm down. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Recently, I had Roland Mann on the channel. We talked about, you know, comic editing in the comic writing stream, the last one we did. He's going to be back on the channel. Hopefully, he's talking about Malibu Comics along with um, Aaron Lepresti. But that's the plan. We'll see if we can get it together soon. And we were talking, obviously, beforehand, and he mentioned, I don't read new comics, at least not from DC and Marvel. He goes, they, they stopped making comic books for me a long time ago. Yeah, I guess maybe he hadn't read a new Marvel or DC comic in like a decade. A lot of the viewers will know Eric Breen been reading comic books longer than I've been alive, and I'm not a young man. So he's been he's been reading comics since he was a very a very young man himself. And he he hasn't read Marvel comics in almost ten years, and he recently quit reading DC comics, even though his entire life he's essentially been a Marvel fanboy. And I I hear the same thing. They stopped making comics for me, Wes. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not here to criticize Eric or Roland. I can completely see why they would come to that conclusion. But I definitely will criticize DC and Marvel and a lot of the creators in the comic book industry and really in entertainment in general. The idea that you're making comic books under the big two brands, you know, these are worldwide known commodities, right? These are brands that, that people every in every corner of the globe know. You know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, X-Men. You know, characters with a far reach. Now we have the Avengers. Everybody knows who the Avengers are. And the fact that DC and Marvel are putting comic books out that are so low quality, generally speaking, across the board, that it drives people away from the hobby. And I'm not talking about drives them away from the hobby permanently. Eric and Roland still read comic books every single day. When I saw Roland, you know, when he was recording, he was literally, literally surrounded by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of copies of comic books. Some DC, some Marvel, some independent. If you go to, to Breen's house, he's shown a few videos on his YouTube channel. He's got a couple where he shows off his collection. He's literally surrounded by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of comic books. He reads comic books every single day of his life. He reads new comics still, independent comics. Not as many as he used to, but he certainly reads more of them than he does DC or Marvel. And Roland is still writing comic books for Silver Line, and you know, he still reads indie comics, but he's completely given up on the big two. And I think that's unfortunate. And it's not really a, a fault of theirs. You know, the fault essentially lies lies squarely on DC and Marvel and their editorial staff and their leadership teams. The fact that they could lose readers like this, that they're pumping money into, uh, you know, the back issue market, which we're seeing is skyrocketing, you know, bigger sales numbers than ever on the back issue market. Just it's hot, hot, hot. Has been for, for like a year, over a year now. People have been just diving into the back market, back issue market, because they're, you know, they're just not, their comic book habit is not being fed. <laughs> by by a lot of modern comic books. And some people will point to, well, there's there's really good sales right now. I'm going to talk about that on the channel tomorrow with, with Perch, where you are going to dive into those sales numbers. There's some interesting stuff there. And there are, you know, there are signs that things might be turning around a bit. But I think there's a little bit more to it than that. But we also get with this that, uh, you know, some readers, longtime readers, People that still read comic books have basically just given up. Like, ah, they don't make anything for me. I also get feedback from a lot of viewers making excuses for, for modern day comic writers. Why would you even review this, Wes? This comic book wasn't even meant for you. I have a comic book YouTube channel. I literally talk about comic books every single day on my channel, have done for several years now. There have been a few breaks and we, we had a but we had a, a, a typhoon. I lost power for like 10 days. The for, for birth of my first son, I was not completely prepared. The birth of the, well, 
the first birth of a son on when I had the channel, then the sa the second time I was prepared. We already had a, a son when I started the channel. So I've got three boys now. So there have been a couple of times when there hasn't been content up. But for the most part, there's there's multiple videos every single day. I haven't taken a day off making videos since my my two boys' birthday on in the birth of, of my third child. They were all right in the, the same time, time period. I haven't had a day off in like two or three months, which is normal. And I'm not uh, I'm not trying to to get any type of sympathy or anything. This is this just uh, what I do in my retirement. This is this is what I do for me. I get to talk to you guys about comic books. So the idea that somebody that literally reads comic books every single day of their life, I read new comic books every single day, and I talk about them on the channel. Well, you shouldn't you shouldn't review Mother of Madness. That comic book isn't written for you. That comic book's written for nobody that likes comic books because it's it's poorly constructed. The only people that are saying that that's a good comic book, one, they've never read a comic in their life, and that's their, their introduction. They're like, well, I guess this is what a comic book is. Or number two, they're lying so that they can like signal boost and maybe a virtue signal, that mother of madness. And they, what was she? The single mother high school dropout biochemical engineer part-time sex worker was just the hero we've all been waiting for. Not that you couldn't make a hero out of that, I guess, if, if you wrote it correctly. When I say correctly, well, like you used the medium to its fullest. It was just, uh, you know, pages upon pages of exposition. Of course, a lot of um, messaging coming through with that comic book. A lot of it anti-man. Shocking. In today's climate, they would make a, a comic book that was anti-man. But it's become a crutch for a lot of creators. Well, that comic book wasn't meant for you anyway. You're not supposed to read I Am Not Starfire. Well, no one's supposed to read I Am Not Starfire just because of the premise of the book. If you go in there and read it, the art's fine. The story itself, as generic as it is, has certainly been told a billion times, whether it be in comic books, movies, cartoons, or whatever. But it has a terrible protagonist. But I guess they forgot to tell Mariko Tamaki, perhaps, perhaps you should make the hero of the book likable. Maybe by the end... The reader should be rooting for the hero to win. But it's a lack of skill. It's a lack of craft. And the point of, of I Am Not Starfire wasn't to, to tell a good, compelling story that anybody could go in there and engage with. It was there, it was there for message. And that's what a lot of the, the problems within entertainment and comic books today are. But it's become a crutch. You're not supposed to like this anyway. I read comic books. Can you imagine if Pixar said, you know what? We're making this Toy Story movie. And only kids are supposed to like it, even though their their parents are going to have to take them to the movie theater. And they put none of the cool Easter eggs or funny little jokes that only the parents got. Do you think Pixar would be the you know industry giant that it is today? Like the standard bearer of animated uh, feature films in America and, and likely the world? Everybody wishes they could be Pixar because they got that Pixar magic. Because they realize, yes, this entertainment is geared towards children. But people other than children are going to consume it. Perhaps we should make it to where not only is it completely enjoyable by children, but the other people that consume it will also enjoy it as well. And then the next time, they'll be more excited than their kids to go watch. And that is exactly what's happened with Pixar. How about The Notebook? Chick flicks, right? Hey, I like a good chick flick every now and then. There's a lot of them that are terrible, but what is done correctly? Absolutely. Are chick flicks aimed at me absolutely not but of course i am going to get drug along on with them at least you know when i was single i have to go out on date night or whatever now that i'm married the closest theater is four hours away and it did burn down i don't know if they built rebuilt it yet but for the wife and i to go to to movie night like we got to pack up all three kids we got to book a hotel room and you know it, it's a lot of work for us to go to go to date night in an actual theater obviously you could do that at home now but uh you know just because chick flicks aren't exactly aimed at the male viewers doesn't mean that they shouldn't be created with those consumers in mind, knowing that they're going to get drug along to where maybe by the end of the movie, they're rooting more for Noah than anybody in the theater. It can happen. You think about Ghostbusters, pretty ridiculous premise. Really, if you think about it, probably only guys in their 20s that are stoned out of their minds should like Ghostbusters. 
you know, based on the casting and the premise of the of the movie. But they wrote it and they made it in such a way that kids liked it more than adults and adults loved it. Because just because just because what you've created or the genre or the or the uh, the story style like that you're trying to tell is aimed at a particular audience that is more receptive to that type of story genre whatever doesn't mean that's the only audience you should be trying to hit right you should want anybody that comes in and takes a gander to say you know what i wasn't really looking forward to mother of madness but i'm really surprised i think this this character's dope i don't know if i can relate to her but hey, i would like to see her what at the end and you get none of that and it's a real crutch you always say it who was it uh when charlie's angels came out i bet if you look at the initial numbers from that charlie's angels like with uh, Drew Barrymore and who are we else have in there? Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, when they did that one. I bet the, the audience was 50-50 split, men and women, that were excited to see that movie. We get this remake. It's like, yeah, this is only made for women. The movie comes out, bombs. Why didn't men go see this movie? Well, Jesus, you told us not to. That's on you. That's not on me. And I think a lot of creators, whether it be in entertainment and comic books, entertainment, I'm saying like movies and television, they're narrowing down their audience so much and they're writing specifically for like one message to, to one group of people that they're excluding all these other customers. And then they're blaming you for thinking it's shit. How could you, you can't critique Charlie's Angels. You're a man. Well, I critiqued the last one. I watched the last one. It was perfectly fine. Now, I'll be honest. I didn't, I never liked Charlie's Angels. I thought the TV show was good, but I didn't like the movies. Somebody's going to yell at me. That's fine. But it's, it's their way of getting around criticism. You're not supposed to read that anyway. And if you do read it, you're certainly not supposed to talk about it. Why would you have an opinion on a comic book? I don't know. I have opinions on comic books every single day of my life. They're right here every day. Why wouldn't I have an opinion on a comic book is really the question. But it's all about getting around criticism and having to own up and answer for the quality of the work. And a lot of creators can't handle it. I think we've seen, um, I've seen so many weird threads the past few days, like telling people how they're allowed to critique people's work. I don't know. I remember getting a customer like comment card. There was never rules. What did you think? Well, here it is. Well, there is a customer comment card. It's called Twitter. And, you know, typically I do not at the creators if I have something negative to say. If they want to find it, they can find it on their own. And that's not because I'm a pussy or I'm scared. There's no reason to be rude. If they want to find it, they will find it. Now, if I have something very positive to say, generally speaking, I will tag them in just so they know that, you know, give them some good feedback. A lot of people would prefer that to the negative feedback. And when I do negative feedback, I, I'm not talking about being overly rude. <laughs> like, like you're a piece of shit, you should die or something like that. That stuff's crazy. And if you're giving people feedback like that, you should rethink that. That's, that's, that's crazy. That, that is out of, that is so far gone. There's not a comic book written in the world or a movie so bad that somebody needs to die or like move or something <laughs> like, you know, I, I do take comics very seriously, but I, I can't take them that seriously. Right. We want, we don't want to go too far into criticism, which probably is, is caused a lot of the defensiveness over criticism in, in comic books and entertainment nowadays. But I, I just, just think about it. The idea that a comic book is no longer written for a comic book reader, people that have been reading comic books and enjoying them their entire lives, are told that they're being excluded now from their own hobby that they've been supporting, you know, in some cases upwards of over 40 years. It's ridiculous. And the idea that you can't criticize something because in the creator's mind or whoever's mind, that it wasn't meant for you anyway. Listen, if I love movies, every movie was meant for me, right? If I like animated movies, there shouldn't be an animated movie that I watch if I watch enough of them and I can't go, you know what? Even if I, I don't, I don't like exactly like the story they're telling here, but it's well-crafted, it's executed good. You know, they, 
the, the main character, they're doing what they meant to do. It just wasn't for me. And I've done that with comic books before. I've said, I will give this a three and a half star. I'll recommend it to you, but I'm not reading it anymore because it's just not the kind of comic book that I'm into. And then there will be things that are absolutely 100% written for me. And I'll be like, this sucks. Like you, you forgot to flesh out the character. You know, the, the pacing's all off. You're jumping from scene to scene. There's no transitions. There's a lot of issues with this comic. And I wouldn't recommend it. Just because a piece of entertainment wasn't exactly designed with me in their key demographic doesn't mean it's off limits. And if you come into my comments section and say that, I'm just going to roll my eyes, laugh a little, and move on. Because that is, you know, on its, just the idea that somehow somebody's creation is critic proof because they've narrowed down the audience to such a, 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 a finite amount of actual customers that everybody else doesn't get to have a say or an opinion on whether or not something was good. And I think it's too bad that, that we've had so many uh, longtime readers that are still enjoying the hobby, but can't enjoy DC and Marvel comics right now. Now, there are some outliers. You know, hey, if Roland and, and Bree said, hey, Wes, I would like to just see if there's something DC or Marvel related that I would like. I would have some suggestions for it. I'd say go read up on Daredevil. Go check out Beta Ray Bill from Daniel Warren Johnson. I think Sinister War is pretty darn good. Go read Robin. You know, that Chip Zdarsky story in um, Batman Urban Legends, Justice League Last Ride. There's, there's a handful of things out there from the big two that are actually really good. But for the most part, it, it, it's average or it's complete dog shit. I think most people can actually agree with that. I bet you. If we could get an anonymous survey of the creators out there, tick, tick the creator names off and just say, read this comic book and tell me if it's good or not. I think most of them would be like, nah, this sucks. Like, yeah, that was your best friend. <laughs> we know that you hadn't been reading their comics lately, but I, I it's, these things are really easy to spot. But I'm not going away. I'm going to review comic books, whether they were designed for me or not. I have a comic book channel. Every comic book is designed for me, even if it's for kids. I read little kids comics with my five or my six-year-old all the time. Guess what? There's some really good ones out there. Tiny Titans are dope. There's a Superman or is it Superman of Metropolis that's basically written for toddlers that my son loves. It's a really good story. The art's awesome. Just because it wasn't made with me specifically in mind doesn't mean I can't enjoy it and doesn't mean that I can't appreciate the craft involved and identify if something was actually done well and, and put out, you know, uh, you know, in a good state that should be consumed and appreciated. I can look at Mother of Madness and tell you that is a bad comic book. It's awful. I can go read Justice League and tell you that's awful. I can read Jeremy, Jason Aaron's, uh, you know, Phoenix Tournament in Avengers and tell you it's dog shit. And I can tell you exactly why. And I can read. I am not Starfire. I do have reading comprehension. And I can tell you why that comic book is not successful as far as the execution of the story. Here's a hit. The main character is awful. Everything else is it's generic, but it's fine. The art's good. You know, there's no reason, you know, that, that shouldn't. If they just fine-tune the character and some of the, you know, some of the conflict and I am not Starfire, it would be perfectly generic you know, YA graphic novel number four that wouldn't stand out for any reason at all other than, well, they wasted some good art. So it's crazy that you have people walking away admitting that comics aren't really meant for them anymore. And you just always have people showing up telling me, you can't comment on that. Yes, I can. We could all comment on things. We're all customers here. So I think it's ridiculous on, on the idea of that, that as a comic book consumer, there are comic books out there that I shouldn't even have an opinion on. What do you guys think? Do you think that just because there's a there's a genre or you know maybe a, a type of storytelling that's being used that isn't completely you know uh, designed for you as a customer that you couldn't you shouldn't be able to enjoy it or at least appreciate the craft involved when it's done well? I say balderdash. <laughs>